Come with me to see how you can visit the Golden Circle and Blue Lagoon all in one day from Reykjavik. Iceland will blow your mind from being able to stand between two continents to experiencing a beautiful sunny green Iceland to a snowy wonderland all in one day. This island will surprise you around every corner. If you're looking to travel solo around Iceland and without a car, then this is a series for you. Be sure to follow along on the adventure. Good morning, we're here at the Rainbow Street. I just woke up early to get some photos here and I'm gonna, gonna grab some breakfast quick and then heading to do the Golden Circle road trip and day trip. Super excited about that and then we'll be going to the Blue Lagoon as well. It is really, really, really cold. And yeah, I mean, as to be expected in March, end of March still. But the sun actually comes out quite early, like at seven in the morning, and then it stays up until like 7 30, 8 o'clock, honestly. So it's actually pretty nice that we get a good amount of daylight. I think this might be one of the best months to come if you want to get a little bit of winter Iceland and still get a lot done. Hopefully, the weather holds up and we have a good time. But for now, let's go grab some breakfast. I headed down one of the main streets and found it San Hall, which was an amazing bakery. Good morning. I'm here at San Hall Bakery and it is definitely a busy one. And it is so good. I got an oat milk latte and also this delicious looking brown cinnamon bun. Check that out. And yeah, I'm about to head it on to the Golden Circle tour i have to meet them so i have to eat this pretty quickly but so far so good this is definitely a beautiful space and a lot of natural light and let's taste a sip of this latte mm, really good definitely one thing that i've noticed is Reykjavik has a lot of awesome coffee shops and bakeries and those are one of the things that i love when i'm traveling to check out so definitely if you're in town like this was only a six minute walk and very close to the Rainbow Road. So definitely come in here and grab something warm to warm you up. But I'm gonna start eating this before I have to go. I am now heading to the Golden Circle Tour. Basically, one interesting thing I found is they can pick up in front of some hotels, but if you're close to like the Rainbow Street, they have certain bus stops and that's to help with not a lot of congestion in the city center. So that's where we're heading now to bus stop six to meet the Golden Circle tour that I'm on. I booked it with Get Your Guide. I love Get Your Guide, it makes it super easy. I also booked the transfer from the airport to Reykjavik City Center from Keflavik. But yes, headed to the tour and they pick you up within a window time frame of uh, like 30 minutes. So we're five minutes away from I scheduled pickup time. We met our guide in the city center and hit the road. He was definitely very knowledgeable and taught us a lot about Iceland culture. It was definitely worth booking a tour to have a local's perspective. And not only that, just to be able to see the nature and enjoy it without having to drive. Welcome to the first stop of the Golden Circle road trip. We are on a day trip and I'm so excited because this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's Iceland's first UNESCO World Heritage Site. So now they have two on the mainland and then there's one off land on an island. But this spot is very significant because this is where the Iceland was formed basically. The first parliament and the oldest parliament that started in 1930 began here in Finglefair National Park. You can see off in the distance, this is Iceland's largest lake. So beautiful. It's kind of snowing out right now. But this is definitely cool because when you come here, you can see where the two tectonic plates of Eurasia and the Americas come together. So this is where two continents meet here. I can't believe it's snowing right now, but I guess what they say is true. The weather in Iceland really is unpredictable, but that's why you come prepared with everything. Waterproof hats, everything like, but this is really beautiful. Here you can walk in between two tectonic plates. And this is where the plates are separating when magma 
is pushed up to the Earth's surface to spread the two tectonic plates away from each other. And I think up here is where we see the Parliament Houses. Okay guys, I am just relaxing. There's a cafe here. And yeah, I was getting really, really cold outside. So I came in, but Fingvellir, Fingvellir National Park is definitely a beautiful place. And you can come here, walk around. Everything's about within a 20 or 30 minute walk, the guy at the gift shop said. And yeah, standard between two continents. I don't even know. Yeah, this is the only place you can come to to do this. And not only that, it's like the beginning of like the creation of both the American continent and the Eurasian continent. It's nuts. And yeah, everything here is just like on another level. Like every way you look is a different picturesque scenery. Like look, this sun right now is shining on this mountain and it's just beautiful. But yeah, here you can come into the gift shop, have a coffee, and enjoy the views as you warm up before going back on the bus for the Golden Circle. I'm just gonna enjoy this really quickly before I have to get back on the bus. So you can go see Fingla Fair Church and the old ruins of it. I didn't really see that. I think it's a little further down. Like walking through the rocky cliffs and like fissures as you're walking down on the like path that they designated it's just really really out of this world honestly like i never expected that i was going to be here and be able to see this you know you learn earth signs about the tectonic plates but now i'm getting to literally see it and see it in between two continents at once finally we were off to our next stop we're not even an hour and a half like or so into the drive on the golden circle and in the winter you can see how quickly everything changes it literally went from being like green and mossy while we were by the national park over there to now just like full-on winter in iceland with a bunch of snow and now we're heading to Gullfoss falls which is one of iceland's most iconic waterfalls and yeah i wonder how much water is going to be running or if it's going to be icy because there's so much snow right now on the ground and yeah this tour is definitely good he's going into explanations of like some of the different eruptions that have occurred here some of which i remember from like the news like when they have the huge smoke or like ashes and plume above iceland that had halted air traffic for a while and now yeah just learning about the most recent one as well. That would have been cool to come see and go hike to. I remember watching some people go and yeah, now we'll just see what this waterfall's like. I'm wondering how wet I'm going to get because it is quite cold out. So I have this jacket and then I have another North Face and then I have my winter jacket, but I didn't bring my waterproof jacket or waterproof pants. So we shall see how this marina wool holds up. And yeah, well, see the waterfall but first we made a pit stop to see some icelandic courses on the side of the road and they were super cute and here we come to Gullfoss falls gull meaning golden and supposedly it's called that because some really rich guy threw a coffin of gold down at the waterfalls. I don't know what he was thinking about that. But here we go. Let's see what it looks like. I did not expect to see this much snow <laughs> in the wind. I know it's a winter, but I did not expect to see this much snow. What the heck? Whoa! This is nuts! One thing I loved was just how unexpected this snowy winter wonderland was at Gulf Falls Falls. I never expected to see it like this before, and I think it was so special to enjoy it like this. Okay, so one thing I definitely didn't factor in for was I should have worn my snow boots and even maybe snow pants because this is a lot of snow. And that's the interesting thing about Iceland. It's like within an hour and a half, two hours of Reykjavik, you can go from like sunny weather to a full on snow like storm. 
And yeah, I did not expect to see Gulf Falls. Like, I knew it was going to be frozen, but it's pretty special to see it completely covered and blanketed in snow. But yeah, I wore my oboes today, which still have good grip, even in the cold weather. But it's definitely an experience to come in the winter. And I guess, like, sometimes you have to watch out because sometimes they don't have a certain pass, like, open. But today, it's all open, so we're able to come down and see it close up from downstream and also from up above, which is pretty cool. But here, let's see what we got over here. Oh, see, something's already closed down over that way. But I'm a little closer now. So actually, on this tour, compared to the Snifelsness one, we get more time at each stop. I think it's because the ring road is only around, I mean like the Golden Circle is really only three and a half hours from Reykjavik starting point to ending in Reykjavik as well. But yeah, this is definitely cool over here. It's definitely nice when you walk away sometimes, like I walk downstream a little bit more and you're away from all the tourists getting the same photo. But another unique thing about Gulf Falls Falls is you can view it from up above. So I'm actually going to go over and see the viewpoint where all those people are up there. So I'm really excited about this because it's not too busy and it's probably because it's winter time and it's like pouring and bucketing snow. But you can still see the waterfalls pretty clearly and I think it's pretty special to see it covered in snow, in ice. But now I'm excited because I think we're going to go see the geyser and have some lunch. And yeah, Gulf Falls is definitely a bucket list waterfall to visit. And yeah, if you didn't know, Foss means waterfall. And that's why whenever you're going around, driving around Iceland, see a Foss, maybe stop by because you might have an epic, epic view like Gulf Foss. But for now, let's go. I have to go meet the bus again and it's bucketing snow, so I'm gonna put my camera away before it gets too wet. Next stop was the Geyser Geothermal Park. The snow's kind of lightening up and the sky's blue in front of us. Maybe it'll be good for the geyser. One thing I do think that is great is that most of these stops there is a little like cafe, gift shop, and bathrooms as well. Snifelessness was definitely a little bit more wild, so there was less stops for bathrooms or places you could pick up a hot drink to stay warm. Just so you know. Alrighty, so right now we're by the geothermal geysers, and there's a bit of a hike up. I don't know if it's up there, maybe just a viewpoint. But this is where we also have lunch. They do recommend in the winter for you to have crampons for your shoes so you don't slide around because it is pretty slippery. If you ever wondered where Geyser got its name, it got it from Europe's first ever documented geyser, which was Great Geyser, located at the Geyser Geothermal Park in Iceland. While it doesn't erupt anymore, you can see Stroker giving you a show every five to 10 minutes, shooting water as high as 40 meters. Trust in our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. Just casually have a geyser behind me. And yeah, this is just so cool. I'm just about to go get some lunch for a lunch stop and then head up back onto the bus. This has been one of the best and most epic trips ever. And you can see over my shoulder, that's the Iceland forest. They don't have many tall trees here. <laughs> but yeah, this has definitely been a cool, entertaining stop. These geysers are very active. And so it's just like all the geothermal activity that goes on here. But it makes sense, we're close to the rift of the two tectonic loops. So yeah, sorry for my unscientific explaining of things, but yeah. That's how it goes. Oh, it smells really bad. Well, the sulfur. But yeah, time to go get some hopefully more appetizing food. I'm here and I'm having really expensive lamb soup. Mm. I didn't even want to look at how much it costs, but let's see. $19.45 soup. But he said he'll refill it. 
Let's see how many refills I can do. Here's to three. Okay guys, successfully did three seats. Now it's time to leave. <laughs> also, they have a really nice shop where you can get some like wool products and all of those. So, some other things as well. And merino wool socks. And other things to keep you warm. So this is so cool. You can walk around the crater here. And it is super cool. But they do warn you it's slippery. So I'm glad I have my oboes on. Hiking beats all the way. At least it's not snowing here. We have a clear sky. It makes for a pretty epic view. Honestly, did not expect this great weather. Hopefully it continues when we go to the Blue Lagoon next. And we get to relax after getting a few little hikes in. It is quite windy up here. Definitely something you need to account for. Like honestly, who'd have thought there would have been all these trees over on this side of the crater. I'm just walking along right now and it is definitely a little pretty nice hike. They do have things that tell you not to cross over here because it must be steeper. But this crater is massive and it exploded 6,500 years ago. That's when the caldera collapsed and then formed a lake, which is now frozen in the winter time, but in the summer, is extremely beautiful in clear blue waters. Oh yeah, we're in winter here. This is snow blowing from the crater. Iceland just has so many different natural geological things to see that you can't find anywhere honestly else in the US. I think it has more volcanoes than Indonesia is what our guide said. Almost completed the loop around Karate crater definitely beautiful even in the winter definitely reminds me of Kilatoa in Ecuador but yeah super excited now off to the blue lagoon I get to relax and put a bathing suit on in this cold weather <laughs> but I'm sure it's gonna be very relaxing after an epic day trip around the Golden Circle, it was time to head to our grand finale at the Blue Lagoon. Iceland is known for its geothermal spots, and this might be one of the most famous ones. And here we are, Blue Lagoon. Entry included with my gator guide ticket. Uh, one more time. This is where you check in to get your van, which allows you to open your locker and whatnot, get your mask and get some other things. The entry included a mud mask and one drink at the cafe. After I got my drink and situated, it was time to head out to the Blue Lagoon. First you have to like shower and get other kind of conditioner on. Being on a bus for two days in a row, this is definitely worth it. After having a little fun in the Blue Lagoon, it was time to get my silica mask and put it on. The mask definitely did get very frozen onto my face. It was hard to even move my face. And then when I washed it off, it got all my eyes, but afterwards my skin felt so amazing. After enjoying the Blue Lagoon, it was time to go into the sauna and then get a little douse of cold water. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> yeah, it's gold. It's gold when you go in that. Oh, that was good. 
After an amazing day trip, it was time to call it a day and head back into Reykjavik, which was only 30 minutes away. All right, guys, I'm just getting some takeaway pizza because I am hungry and cold. It's 9.30, I hit my head, I walked into a door, don't even ask. But I really had an amazing day today and I just want something warm and filling and this place is not that bad, $12.99 for my own pizza. And yeah, it smells really good. And yeah, it's just this nice little small takeaway shop. And it was like six minutes away from where I'm staying in Reykjavik, so I decided why not. And tomorrow I have to be up super early at 7.30 to meet the group. And then we're gonna head to visit the south coast of Iceland. But man, I've really been enjoying Iceland so far and I've been blessed with the weather to say the least, knock on wood, cause I do not want to uh, jinx myself. But yes, so far it's so good. So this is Loft Hostel. They have a nice little bar area if people can do some work. And it actually closes pretty early so you can get sleep upstairs or down, I mean downstairs. But yeah, I'm just gonna have my pizza and chill. Well, I thought I was gonna have a quiet one, but the cool thing about staying in a hostel is you meet people, and then we ended up going out and finding a lot of cool places, live music, DJs. Who knew you could find all of this in Reykjavik? Hope this helps you in planning your trip to Iceland and convince you why this is the most relaxing way to experience Golden Circle and Blue Lagoon in one day. Be sure to subscribe to not miss the adventure as we leave Reykjavik for a new base in the south coast of Iceland.